On today's show, it's all about the bulls and the bears. So grab yourself a brew and let's start now. When we look at bulls and bears, if you're an investor, of course, you're thinking about the stock market. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about bull markets, bear markets, bullish and bearish. How is it that we came to call those terms bull and bear? How did they become involved with the stock market? Well, interestingly enough, the most common explanation is the way the animals attack. So bears, they tend to swipe down with their claws when they attack. Thus, a downward trend is said to be bearish. Interestingly enough, though, if you look deeper into the meaning, there used to be, in the 18th century, there used to be a saying, it is unwise to sell the bear skin before you catch the bear. And that somehow translated into a negative trend. And it is thought that that saying had some impact into how bears became associated with these downward trends as well. When it comes to bulls, they tend to thrust up with their horns when they attack. Thus, an upward trend is said to be bullish. If you dig a little bit deeper into that as well, you'll also find that bull initially was meant to mean a speculative purchase with an expectation of it going up in value, which is not very far from the whole bullish idea. So obviously, if you're bullish on a speculative stock, that's exactly what would happen. So let's get into uh, some further definition. So a bear market is a prolonged market in which investment values have fallen 20% or more off of the all-time high, ATH. A bull market is a prolonged market in which investment values are rising faster than the historical average, usually 20% or more above the previous low. When it comes, of course, to crypto, we use the same definitions, but we need to observe the trend over a longer period of time because crypto with its volatility will have uh, massive jumps and drops of 20% or more. Those do not all of a sudden mean that we're in a bear market. It just means we have to pull back and look at the overall trend over a longer period of time to determine if we are indeed in a bear market. Uh, as As of right now, we're currently still in a bull market, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Well, let's talk about bear markets. So we've had, since 1932, we've had 13 bear markets. They tend to be shorter in duration than bull markets, which is kind of interesting. I, it's also kind of nice as an investor to know that your, your bear market's gonna be shorter than the bull market. The average length of a bear market is 1.5 years. So the shortest bear market was in 2020. That was um, end of February, into March. If you look at any chart for almost any asset, you will see that bear market. It was not very long. It was in fact less than a month, but it was still a bear market. It still hit the criteria for a bear market. So it does count as a bear market. There were corrections on prices and it did give companies a chance to lessen some of the pressures uh, from the pre- previous bull market. Now the longest bear market was back in 1937 and that was a 5.15 year long bear market. So bear markets can drag on and if you've noticed that 1932 that was towards the end of the depression. So there was definitely a lot of market issues back during the depression that that more than likely helped these bears hold on for so long. Well, let's Look at the bull markets. So we've had 14 bull markets since 1932. And now I'm counting the one that we're currently in as well. They do tend to be longer than bear markets. The average length of a bull market is 5.2 years, which is great. So the longest bull market was in 2009 and it lasted for almost 11 years. It was just a couple of fraction, couple fractions short of 11 years. The shortest bull market was way back in 1966 and it was 2.15 2.15 years. So that's pretty short, but these numbers are going to come to play here in a moment because they're very interesting. So let's look at our current market. So in the current market, we've been in a bull market since, well, March of 2020. So that's 22 months or 1.83 years. Interesting. It's eight months less than the shortest bull market. Well, that's cool. So does that mean that the odds of us setting a new shortest bull market are are really high? So we're probably good for eight months. Here's the issue with that. Here's our however. So the brief bear market in 2020 was a response to a world health event. Should we even include it? That's a good question. If we were to exclude the 2020 bear blip, then we would have been in a bull market for 12.84 years, which would be the longest bull market 
I did mention though that there were corrections in that brief bear market in 2020. So pressures were removed from companies. It did still function as a bear market. So I don't think we can uh, fully exclude that as a bear market when we're trying to calculate things. So let's ask that question then. Are we overdue? But where is the bear market? Is it coming tomorrow? Is it coming today? Are we already in it and we don't even know it? Will we know when the bear market starts? Well, here's the interesting things. Most bull hops are unrecognizable as they occur and are only seen when we look back on them from the future. It's easy to see a bull market top when you're looking backwards on charts, but when it's happening, you have no idea that it's even happening. So that's something to keep in mind. Could we have hit the top already? Well, the answer to that is yes, of course we can. If we can't see it coming, then we can't say we're not there because we don't know. But is it likely that we have hit the top? That's the better question. And I believe the answer is no. Despite the short bear market in 2020, there was some correction. So there was corrective action and re-evaluation easing the pressure of the previous bull market, as I was mentioning before. So 2020, it's still a bear market and we still count it. So we're still in a short uh, bull market. That does not mean that we can expect this to go on forever, of course. It is going to come to an end. The bear market's coming and we need to know how to prepare. A bear market, well, first of all, it can be an opportunity to make money. So that's a big thing to think about. You know, sometimes the best prices you are ever going to see on some of your favorite stocks, those are going to be during that bear market, many of your favorite overpriced stocks will be on sale for an extended period. That is awesome. So you need to have some position in cash to take advantage of cheaper prices. So if you are completely tapped out, you will not be able to buy some of these sales. However, keep in mind, if it's a bear market that goes on for a year or a little longer, whatever cash flow you do have coming in, you can use that cash, of course, to increase your positionings within some of your favorite stocks. So it's not like you should be, you should definitely shouldn't be liquidating everything you have, turning everything back to cash and just sitting there and waiting. You could be waiting a long time and you could be missing out on, if this, if this bull market decides to go on for another year or more, you could be missing out on a lot of growth if you're sitting on fiat currency. So you kind of have to play it a little bit safe, but at the same time, you, that goes in both directions. So blue skies. So bear markets are always coming and bull markets will always return. It is a cycle. It is a predictable cycle. We can't predict the day that the bull, the, the, we can't predict the day that the bear market's going to come in and say goodbye bulls. We can't predict the day the bears are going to come in and uh, send the bulls packing. And we can't, and likewise, we can't predict when the bulls are coming back and sending the bears pack. This is all, it's all speculation. Obviously though, when you look at a lot of the key indicators like the S&P, the Dow Jones, you can see them hitting record highs over and over and over again. Well, those are absolutely key behaviors you would expect to see before the top of a bull market. It still doesn't mean that it's coming. You have to realize that in the current economy, there's a lot of factors that we have never seen before, such as massive money printing, interest rates being held back for so long, out of control inflation, all of these things are playing their role and they may are, they are going to influence whether or not the bears come back sooner or later. We're sort of in that situation that if we start to head into a bear market, the governments of the world could start printing like crazy again and might be able to uh, stall us going into such a market. It's really hard to say. It'll be interesting to see. Always, of course, keep your eye on the news, keep your eyes on the mark. And when we do start, when it does become 100% obvious we're going into a bear market, you want to be prepared. You want a well diversification into blue chips and recession proof stocks. And the reason I say that is they will do really well despite the current financial weather. So blue chips are, are stocks that you can definitely hold uh, through a bear market without too much concern. And of course you can add to them as you're going through that market. Or you can look at some of your, and here's one of those things. If you have blue chip growth stocks, if you're buying them up during the bear market, they're going to explode when the bulls come back to town. So those are other stocks that you definitely wanna take a hard look at when you're in a bear market. The big thing is though, patience and strategic buying in a bear market will make you a lot of money. So if you like this content, 
definitely click on that like button down below. If you want to see more content like this, then click on subscribe. Hit that little bell if you want to know when I'm posting new videos. So until next time, I bid you a fond adieu.